Welcome to the Terry Stanley Channel. Today, I would like to introduce you to the story, Daughters of Olympus. Author, Dragon Book Lover Kit Kat 913. Read by, Terry Stanley. Chapter 1, Larissa. Children of Cupid and Psyche rarely get the attention we deserve. I mean, I know that sounds stuck up, but come on. They've been married since ancient Greek times and everyone thinks they only had one kid. Nope. They had two daughters, both wonderful in their own way. This story isn't about Hedon, goddess of pleasure and my big sister though. It's about me, Larissa Dover, hey. I needed a last name. I'm human too. Kind of. And it all started on September 15th. Come on. Is that all you got, sis? I teased head on as she barely missed getting struck by my copis, she rolled to the side, her black hair flying in her face, blocking her chocolate tie brown eyes. I always wore my hair up in a romantic tuck, so I didn't have to worry about my hair getting messed up like my sister did. Not that I worried about my looks or anything. The copus she'd nearly got struck with was a weapon I rarely used, usually preferring my crossbow pistol but my mother thought it best my sister and I get used to all types of weapons of war. Though when we'd ever need them, the gods only knew. Hedon and I had been sparring for three hours in the garden outside of my grandmother's palace. The gardens were enchanted to look like they had your favorite flowers, therefore, there were violets all over the place whenever I looked at it, even though Hedon insisted there were roses everywhere, for miles on with fountains and ponds that had marble statues in the middle shaped like hearts and roses. The palace itself was made with white marble, and had gold gilding. It was in typical Grecian style, with a ton of columns and arches and pavilions. My grandmother, Aphrodite, also had a ton of pink banners and frou-frou girly stuff. I love pink as much as the next person, but grandmother overdoes it. A lot. Hey. You know I don't like the copus. Hedon complained. I rolled my eyes as I ducked a swipe from her with ease. I thought about making my feathery white wings appear, courtesy of my father's DNA, and flying out of reach, but I didn't want to be too mean. Why don't you pretend it brings you pleasure, O oh great and powerful goddess? I asked. She groaned before waving her white handkerchief in surrender as she collapsed onto the luscious grass. I fell down beside her and I listened as she struggled to breathe for a few minutes before I spoke again. When do you think father will be done talking to mother and grandmother about Camp Half-Blood? You aren't supposed to know about that. Were you eavesdropping again? Hedon wasn't wrong. But I just got so bored of everyone talking behind my back, so, I snuck behind a column and listened in on their conversations. I can't help it. I'm curious. So. Am I going or not? I propped myself up on my elbows and stared at her, demanding an answer. She hesitated for a moment before giving in. Yes. Grandmother will take you, make you do some silly love mission, though she is the goddess of love itself, so what do you expect? And then? I won't see you again until Christmas, Hedon said, her lip quivering. And the autumn equinox hasn't even occurred yet. Note, Autumn Equinox takes place September 22nd or at least it does now. I drew her in an embrace, taking in her cinnamon perfume. Sure, I'd miss her and our parents and grandmother, but I wanted an adventure. Something that I didn't really get to experience, unless sparring with head on or learning love tactics from grandmother and or father counted. Do you know what the mission is about? I asked after she calmed down a bit and wasn't about to cry. Hedon thought about it for a second before smiling mischievously. I had to clench my fists and think happy thoughts to keep myself from going on a Godzilla-style rampage. No. Tell me she is not making me mess with Solangelo. I cried. Her eyes widened and she shook her head so fast, it was nearly comical. Never. It's father's favorite ship, and he'd never permit it. No, you're going to be messing with another. If you say Callio, I swear to all the gods. I mean, let me finish. Your mission involves making Annabeth Chase's love life interesting. Hedon said. I flopped onto the ground, shutting my eyes. I hate it when she makes me mess with Perkabeth. 
Chapter 2, Sophie. I was in the middle of a very animated conversation with a rock when my foster brothers interrupted me. Again. Sophie's talking to rocks again. Ha ha. Jeff yelled. I groaned before making a tree root appear to trip him. Ow. Not nice. I'm telling. Eric cried. I smiled. I knew even if he did, they couldn't do anything. My real parents were throw Stuart and Barbara into Tartarus if they found those two had done anything disrespectful to me. The Andersons were nice and all, but sometimes they got fed up with my demigod powers. What did you come here tell me? Unless you just wanted to find me for fun? Your parents are here. Said it's time for camp, Eric replied. That means we don't have to see you anymore, right? Jeff asked. I nodded eagerly as I started running towards the dull grey house I'd been forced to live in for the last five years of my life. My parents, Hades and Persephone, had originally raised me in the underworld to keep me from Demeter, so she wouldn't be able to find me. Or know I exist. If she did, things would only get worse for my dad and I'd probably be dead. Even more so because I'd ended up a demigod instead of a full-fledged godling like I was supposed to. But mother missed me. So she took me on a trip once, just once, to see the outside world. I saw flowers, and trees, and birds, and I fell in love with nature. But Demeter found out. So my parents had to hide me with the mortal family, dull as can be, as far from nature as can be. The only living things around are rocks, who actually have a lot to say. We live in a desert kind of area. I never bothered to learn the name of the country. Or state, if that's the case. I only bothered to learn I couldn't use my powers over nature or anything else, basically making living things grow or grow bigger, talking to all living things or inanimate things, thanks to dad, shadow traveling, raising the dead and precious things from the ground, because that would reveal my location. Talking to rocks was the one thing I was allowed to do though. I jumped over the fence and came face to face with my godly parents. I squealed and wrapped my arms around my mother, who looked vibrant and sunny because it was springtime. My father gave me a quick hug before handing me my two bags. One black, one purple. The two bags I brought here five years ago with some of my things. I never really got that much more stuff, so all my things still fit. I beamed up at them. Is it true? Am I going to camp half-blood? Yes, it's true, sweetheart. Which means the Anderson's memory, as well as any other mortal who remembers you as an Anderson, will forget you ever entered their lives, mother said as she gently blew a golden power on my foster family's faces. They all gently lay down and fell asleep. When they awaken, they shall not know anything about us. Now, when you get to the entrance, your brother and sister will be there waiting for you. All right? Father said. I nodded eagerly. They both hugged me again quickly before vanishing. I vanished too, but not the same way. I was shadow traveling to Camp Half Blood to meet Nico and Hazel, my half siblings, who had known all about me for about a year now. Best. Birthday. Ever. Chapter 3 Larissa. I hope this works, I thought as I patted down my dress. I had had to change into a pale pink dress, with a white heart pattern, along with my favorite pair of white wedges. I had managed to convince my grandmother the only jewelry I needed was my rose gold heart necklace. If I pulled the heart charm off, it became a crossbow and quiver filled with centarian gold arrows. My grandmother had dropped me off a little while ago, before she turned into a dove to spy on the occurrences. Luckily, I'd had enough time to talk to Hedon about the mission. And she managed to come up with something that wouldn't get me killed. Hello, Annabeth, I said as I came across the blonde sitting by the lake. She looked up and studied my face for a minute. I'm sorry, do I know you? I shook my head and sat down, wary of my grandmother. I whispered so that only she could hear about what Aphrodite wanted to happen. Annabeth almost jerked her head up to glare at the dove but I cleared my throat and shook my head slightly. She sighed in disappointment as I stood up. That's when Percy jumped out of the lake, getting water on my shoes. Hey! I exclaimed. 
He shrugged sheepishly and I began to walk away so Annabeth could talk to him. Until Annabeth just shook her head. Nope, you can't go yet, Larissa, was it? She looked at me for clarification and I nodded. Okay, now listen up seaweed brain. Annabeth said as she grabbed Percy and whispered in his ear. He flushed slightly, glancing at me a few times, before nodding slowly. Now that you know, what are you going to do about it? I asked. He walked over to me and frowned slightly. Sorry, but not even the daughter of Cupid can change my mind. No matter how poorly matched you say we are, Percy said in a loud and exaggerated voice. I mentally facepalmed as I'm sure Annabeth did as well before the dove flew to the ground and became my grandmother. Like everyone else, when I saw Aphrodite I saw her as looking like my type, no matter how weird that is. To me, she was blonde sometimes but had dark hair at other times. Her eyes were a gorgeous shade of violet, and she always had a smile on her face. Except when she looked at me, her face turned from beautifully happy to gorgeous yet angry. I shrugged at her, I'd done exactly what she told me. You're lucky I like you, grandmother finally said. I was about to reply when I heard shouting coming from nearby. We all ran, all except grandmother who just transported there, to find the source. Little did I know how drastically my life would change after that. Chapter 4, Sophie. I've missed you guys so much. I exclaimed as I wrapped my arms around my half-siblings, Nico D'Angelo and Hazel Levesque, the moment I materialized a half a mile away from Camp Half-Blood. Hazel hugged back as did Nico, though the latter did so hesitantly, before we pulled apart. So have we. It's so good to see you. Nico shook his head at Hazel's enthusiasm. He didn't show emotion as well as Hazel, but I always understood what he really meant. Am I going to meet your boyfriends? I teased. Hazel's ears turned red while Nico crossed his arms and huffed. Worried I'd gone too far, I rushed to apologize. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, he's fine. Frank's at Jupiter, but I'll bring him next time. Will is around here somewhere though, Hazel and I grinned as we managed to make our brother blush. Whatever. Just remember one thing. He's my boyfriend, not yours, Nico joked. I rolled my eyes as Hazel laughed behind her hand. We all knew I didn't see guys like that. Yep, I'm gay. And no it's not a hereditary thing, even though two children of Hades had turned out funny. Hazel was straight, and while I never met her, I'm pretty sure Bianca was too. Ha ha, I forgot how to laugh. You two gonna take me to meet Chiron or not? I asked. Hazel hooked arms with me on her left and Nico on her right. We then walked over to the big house. As we walked, I spotted a group of people who looked at us curiously. One of them walked over to us. He was about six feet tall, had blonde hair and sky blue eyes. And by the way Nico blushed, I figured it was Will. And it was. After introductions were made, the other people came over. Leo, Piper, Jason, and Calypso. When Leo found out I was yet another one of Hades's mysterious children, he began shouting. Seriously? Just how many of you are there? Said shouting caused some other people to run over to where we were. Including one very gorgeous girl who looked to be my age. Her hair was a light chestnut blonde, and it was tied into some fancy hairdo. Her eyes were brown, but had flecks of gold that shone in the sun. And her smile. I couldn't help but smile back. I blinked to clear my mind so I could try to pay attention to the conversation. I self-consciously looked down at my ripped black jeans, black t-shirt with dark purple roses, black leather jacket, and of course my black leather jacket and cringed. I really was the stereotypical child of Hades, especially with my pale skin and black eyes. The only non-Hades thing about me was my strawberry blonde hair. If only I hadn't hidden most of it inside my black beanie. I didn't usually care about looks, but for some reason this girl, whose name I later learned was Larissa, made me care. I sighed inwardly. Of course I had to be the cliche. Girl that fell for someone I'd just met. We're going to go help her get settled in. See you guys later. Hazel waved as Nika dragged me towards our cabin. 
Hazel elbowed me jokingly. You leak key her. I kept my composure, which was difficult, before rolling my eyes. But they knew me better than that. You do, Nico stated as we entered the cabin. I smiled softly. Maybe I did. Only a little though. Less than one percent. Definitely. Chapter 5, Larissa. I couldn't sleep that night. I'd hung out with Sophie and her siblings at dinner, and walked them back to their cabin when it was time for bed. Sophie. She was almost the complete opposite of me. Except that she was a demigod with two godly parents. Like me. I had always thought I was different, even for a demigod. But there was someone else like me, having to grow up knowing that your parents would outlive you. I kept running things over in my head as I lay in my bed. How was it possible? Why? Was it for the same reason as me? Could it be reversed? I shook my head. It wasn't possible. No matter how many times they tried, no god or goddess could make me immortal. No one knew why. My mother once said it was like there was a magical block surrounding me, so that no magic good or bad could affect me. Maybe Sophie's like that too, I thought. Finally, I managed to put all thoughts about immortality and Sophie out of mind and fell asleep. Only to be woken up by the sounds of laughter five minutes later. I groaned before getting up and pulling my new camp half-blood shirt over a white v-neck, followed by a jean skirt with white leggings and my ever-present wedges. Opening the door of the Aphrodite cabin, there were no children of Cupid or Psyche cabins as my parents were the only godly couple not to cheat. I saw Sophie being chased around by Nico, who looked half annoyed and half amused. I smiled and sat down beside Will and Hazel, both of them looking at the spectacle. Are they always like this? I asked. Hazel nodded furiously. Will shrugged. Haven't you met her before? Nope. She's been living with a mortal family for protection, Will replied. I guess I looked really confused because Hazel then explained the situation with Demeter, her not approving of any of Hades and Persephone's kids, Sophie having to not use her powers, etc. By the time she was done telling me all of this, Nico had caught up to Sophie and took his sword, which I gathered was the cause behind the chase, and the two of them walked over to us. You two have fun? Will teased. I laughed as Nico blushed profusely and Sophie smiled sheepishly. The nice moment was ruined, however, when Annabeth came running over to us. Rachel needs to tell you guys something. I sat down on the porch outside the big house, Sophie sitting next to me. We both didn't have a clue what to say or do. When we had all ran over with Annabeth, Kyron told us Rachel had a vision and recited a prophecy. We just got here. It's not fair, Sophie huffed. I nodded silently. It really wasn't. I looked down at the piece of paper Annabeth had written on, so we could remember exactly what Rachel told us. Chapter 6, Sophie. Nico wasn't exactly thrilled to hear his half-sister was going on her first quest with a girl no one really knew. To comfort him, I had asked that he be my plus one, so to speak. And I guess Larissa and her family really shipped Solangelo, or whatever my brother and his boyfriend were called, because she decided to take Will. Are you ready yet? Nico grumbled. I rolled my eyes. I was the last one to finish packing and of course Big Brother had to be impatient about it. It's been an hour. You just finished like three minutes ago. I'll be done when I'm done. Would you tell a rose to bloom faster? I asked, fanning myself dramatically. Nico sighed as Hazel and Larissa laughed. Your sister sure is something else, Will stated. I smiled as Nico shook his head at me. Why thank you, Will. I take that as the highest compliment, I smirked before zipping up my bag. There. I'm finished. Quit looking at your wrist. You're not even wearing a watch. Nico flushed before shoving his hands into his jacket pocket. It looked like we were ready to go. Then Larissa seemed to have an aha moment followed by a what is going on look. Um, does anyone know where we are going? Good. They took the bait. Thank you, Apollo, Demeter smiled wickedly as she watched the demigods head to the big house, seemingly for advice, or directions. Apollo sighed inwardly before he spoke. No problem. We cool now? Demeter rolled her eyes. 
putting up with childish gods were such a waste of time. She turned to him, nose high in the air like stereotypical villainesses. Yes, we are cool now. You may go, Demeter waved him away. He shrugged before turning into a beam of light and shot towards the sky. Soon? Soon Hades shall pay for what he has done. Soon I shall have my daughter back. Chapter 7, Larissa. I'm guessing you guys realized you didn't know where you were supposed to go, huh? Piper and I nodded sheepishly as Will's face turned red and Nico just huffed. Go to the Clear Creek Forest in Pennsylvania. Rachel says you need to look around for an ancient plant known as the Gilgamesh plant. You'll know it when you see it. That's a bit specific. Aren't oracles supposed to be cryptic? I asked. Piper shrugged. Usually, but odds are it's not what you're really looking for. Nothing involved with Greeks or Romans are ever easy. Piper waved goodbye before she headed back to her cabin. I'm going to go say bye to Hazel real quick. You coming, Nico? Sophie didn't wait for an answer as she grabbed the dark-haired boy's hand and began to pull him toward the Hades cabin. He relented after a moment or two and just walked with her. Not very patient, is she? Will smiled in amusement as I nodded in agreement. I'd say I was surprised he followed if I didn't know how much he adored her and Hazel. Even children of Hades love their siblings, I stated right as my grandmother began to call my name. I looked to see she was by the lake, probably still awaiting my return after being ushered into the big house. I ran over to her and waited for her to speak again. Chiron filled me in. I must warn you, I have a feeling Demeter is behind this. She never quite forgave Hades for taking her daughter, and she's not known for being too friendly towards their children, grandmother said. I didn't really know what she was talking about at the time, but I figured it had to be important if she felt the need to warn me about it. She wouldn't hurt us, though, right? I mean we're not exactly typical demigods, I replied. She turned to see if anyone was listening in on us. I'm not entirely sure, child. All I know is that she has eyes and ears everywhere. Be careful. I'll try to help as much as I can. Especially with Sophie, at that last part, Aphrodite lost her serious face and winked at me. I felt my face heat up. I don't need help in that department, grandmother, I directed my eyes away, one major downside of having parents, and grandparents, in the love business was that they were always keeping dabs on my love life and attempting to make it more interesting. She simply smiled and patted my head. Of course you don't dear. Doesn't mean I won't try anyways. And with she, she vanished in a puff of pink smoke along with rose petals floating in the air. Gods sure loved to be dramatic. Everything okay? I turned to see the others, all looking right at me. I smiled and walked over to them. Sure am. Now, how are we planning on getting to the forest? Shadow traveling, of course, Sophie replied. Nico nodded, though Will didn't seem too happy with that response. You both know how unhealthy that is, Will scolded. Nico rolled his eyes and I got the feeling they'd had this discussion several times before. We'll trade off, that way we both get a break, get to rest, and neither one of us gets too tired, Sophie compromised. Will looked to me and all I could do was shrug, it sounded like a fair deal to me. He shook his head but didn't interfere when Nico had us grab each other's hands and I got to experience the wonder note sarcasm at his shadow traveling. Chapter 8, Sophie. Your turn, I groaned as Larissa helped me sit down on a log. I felt a little guilty sitting on something that used to be alive but I was exhausted. Nico had gotten us to Pennsylvania and was worn out by the fourth trip. Being a child of two gods meant I could shadow travel a lot more before I got tired. That didn't mean I could do it ten times in a row. I think we can just walk. We are in the forest, right? Will asked. I nodded as I leaned into the person next to me, which happened to be Larissa. If I had been more alert, I might have leapt away and apologized. Luckily she let me rest against her. We should rest. Sophie can't stand and Nico, you don't look so great either, Larissa commented. Neither of us could disagree so we all just sat and a comfortable silence fell upon us. 
As I concentrated on breathing, I couldn't help but notice how Nico and Will acted. They were side by side, holding each other's hand, and just whispering to each other. That wasn't so odd, what was odd was the fact that my big brother was blushing. He never blushed. I smiled to myself, and Larissa seemed to notice. She tapped my shoulder and I glanced her way. You seem content. It wasn't a question so much as a statement. I smiled again before I answered. My dopey brother is actually blushing. Never thought I'd see the day a guy like Will could make him happy. She seemed happy with my answer and said nothing else. I wanted it to stay like this forever. Unfortunately, we had a quest. So I stood up, stretched, and opened my mouth to speak when it happened. An indigo scroll with a white ribbon decorated with black skulls appeared out of thin air and fell into my hands. Nico's eyes widened, as did mine. We recognized the scroll all too well. He got up, and dragged Will with him as they still held hands, and walked over to me. Larissa got up too. What does she want? Nico asked. I shrugged before I untied the ribbon and shoved into my pocket. It was a pretty cool ribbon. And then I unrolled the paper that revealed white handwriting. Sophie and Nico. You are in danger. Beware the living. Things are not what they seem to be. That's. I trailed off when I couldn't think of a good word for the situation. Nice. Larissa. Odd. Will. Cryptic. Nico. Yes to all. I think Melinoe enjoys writing these, I said. Melinoe was my sister, my full-blooded sister. She's the Greek goddess of ghosts and is often confused with Hecate, mostly because they both only go out at night. She is the other daughter of Hades and Persephone. Kind of serious, though she's always been nice to me. I think you're right. What does she mean? Nico and I shared a look and, while may not have known what she meant, she only sent us notes when she felt we needed her help. Which meant something bad was going to happen. Really bad. Like Titan War bad. Chapter 9, Larissa. What does a Gilga whatever look like? Sophie asked. Will snickered as Nico gave her a deadpan look. Don't look at me like that. Don't ask such stupid questions then. Nico huffed. Sophie gasped indignantly before the two began to throw insult after insult at each other while Will and I leaned against a tree and watched them go at it. I shifted slightly before I whispered, softly so the Hades siblings wouldn't hear, do they always do this? Will shrugged before he responded. I've only ever heard stories about Sophie. From what Hazel says, this is a pretty common thing. I laughed for a second. They sounded like me and Hedon. A lot. I let myself smile a little as I observed Sophie. Her eyes shined with humor, which let me know she was only playing. Little strands of blonde hair had escaped her beanie and she had to stop talking every now and then to blow them out of her face. Sophie looked cute when she did that. Did you feel that? I had to blink a couple times to come out of my stupor. Sophie had stopped arguing and placed her hand onto the ground. We all became silent as we felt it. A tremor. A moment went by before another occurred, followed by another. Sophie figured out what was happening before everyone else, her eyes widened in horror as she launched herself toward Nico, effectively pushing him to the ground. Where he once stood had become a large hole. Earthquake. Will shouted. I ran with no real destination when I heard someone cry look out. I felt something hit my head. That was when everything went dark. Wake up. I sat straight up, and bumped into something. Said something turned out to be Sophie. I winced and rubbed my head as did she. What's going on? You got knocked out, so I ran over to you, but we got separated from Nico and Will, Sophie explained. I nodded as I surveyed our surroundings. Trees had been knocked over, there were large cracks and holes everywhere, and the entire area was a giant mess. I think Demeter caused it. I turned my head and looked at her to see if she was joking. She wasn't. Demeter? Why? Because she never liked my dad. Or the fact that he married her daughter. Or that they have kids. Sophie didn't seem to want to talk about it anymore, so I changed the subject. 
I guess we should start looking for the boys, I announced. She nodded and helped me stand up. We held hands for a second or two before letting go. I turned my head so she wouldn't see my embarrassed face. Any idea where we are? Not a clue. Chapter 10, Sophie. So far, the day wasn't turning out very good. First, Nico made me look bad in front of Larissa. Then she got knocked out because of an earthquake that my demented grandmother probably sent. And then we got separated from my brother. I had never been on a quest, and I doubted Larissa had either. Although, she had grown up with her godly parents. Maybe that meant she had an advantage. Although, I did too. Not that I'd ever tell anyone about it. Where do you think we should start? I blinked out of my stupor and focused on Larissa. She was looking around, probably trying to decide which way was safer. I shrugged. Only way to know for sure is to see this place from above. And I'm still too tired to use my powers on the trees. Larissa smiled before walking a few feet away. A dull golden light surrounded her, mostly centered around her back. The outline of wings began to form, and little by little the glow grew less transparent. Pure white wings composed of soft-looking feathers eventually materialized. Larissa was still smiling when she looked at me with a smug look in her eyes. Woe was the only thing I could say, thought that didn't web begin to cover how beautiful she I mean her wings looked. Be right back, soft Larissa said before she flapped her wings and shot straight up like an arrow as she made her way through the tree's canopy. She called me soft, I thought suddenly. The thought made my face heat up. I didn't understand why though. My friends had given me nicknames before. But she isn't just a friend. I shook my head to get rid of the unbidden thought that kept repeating itself. I heard flapping and looks up to see Larissa making her way towards the ground. We should just stay here for now. There isn't much else in the forest, and there are too many different directions to go in. Your brother will probably head back here to look for us, Larissa declared as her feet touched the ground and her wings vanished as quickly as they had come. I nodded in agreement, I hated to just wait around but that sounded like the best option we had at the moment. Sounds like a plan. So what should I was cut off suddenly by a loud, angry sounding roar. My eyes widened as I turned around to face a very large black bear. I heard Larissa inhale sharply as I tried to remember how to speak bear. Okay, big? Guy? We are two lost girls with no clue where we are. It wasn't the whole truth, but it wasn't a total lie either. The bear roared again and that's when I realized it wasn't forming words. I may have been a little rusty with speaking bear, but even I knew that he, or she, wasn't actually talking. Which meant one of two things. This animal was created by a god or goddess and therefore lacked the ability to speak. Or it was being controlled by a god or goddess. Either way, the odds weren't looking pretty good. Unless I used the fire, I thought. I was told many times to never use it unless I had to. But my mind went blank when I tried to think of anything else I could do. Please don't hate me, Larissa. I thrusted my hand out and my hand became engulfed in violet flames. Chapter 11, No One. Five years ago, Hades and Persephone discovered that Sophie had an incredible power. A power that had never been inherited by any child sired by Hades. A power so dangerous, that if any of the Olympians' enemies caught word of it, would mean that Sophie would be hunted for the rest of her life, mortal or not. Sophie sweetheart, your father and I need to talk to you, Persephone called out to Sophie, who was playing in the garden. Eight-year-old Sophie smiled and ran over to her parents, unaware of the worried looks on their faces. Persephone grabbed her daughter's hand and led her to a bench to sit down. Hades remained standing, his eyebrows furrowed as he tried to think of way she'd understand. Do you remember that trick you showed us this morning? Sophie nodded before shutting her eyes in concentration. Seconds later, a dim yet clearly visible violet fire wrapped itself around her hand. Persephone's eyes widened in shock as Hades blew it out. Sophie pouted, she liked the fire. That's dangerous. You can't do that anymore, Hades scolded. Sophie cocked her head to the side. You know we love you, right? Of course, daddy. Sophie exclaimed. 
Persephone felt even worse after hearing that. How could she send her little girl away? She let Hades explain that, because of that foolish shouting Persephone took her on, they had to hide her with a mortal family. The sounds of her daughter's tears wrenched Persephone's heart. If only she hadn't inherited that horrible power. The fires of death could do untold amounts of danger. Hades himself could only summon it every now and again because of the great toll it took on one's body. But their daughter did it with complete ease. Something that worried both parents even more than Demeter's threats. Because those flames could kill anyone or destroy anything. Including gods. Chapter 12, Both Larissa and Sophie. Larissa. I wasn't sure what to think about what I saw. Purple flames covered Sophie's hands and her blonde hair turned pitch black. A violet light surrounded her entire body as she aimed the flames at the bear. The beast roared as he stood up on his hind legs. I knew a daughter of Persephone would have been able to handle a normal bear, which meant Sophie had been right. Demeter must have been behind it. I was so wrapped up in my thoughts I didn't even notice the bear turning into golden dust. It was a monster, Sophie stated. I blinked and nodded in agreement. You okay? I smiled and wrapped my arms around her impulsively. I felt her relax and return the embrace. I didn't know you could do that. Sophie chuckled nervously and stepped back after a few seconds. It's the hidden power my dad has a hard time controlling. That's why my parents had to send me away. If word got out that I could do it so easily, she stopped talking. I knew as well as she did the gods would either kill her or use her for their own benefit. Sophie. We both turned to see Nico and Will as they ran toward us. Sophie's eyes lit up as her brother hugged her tightly. I waved at Will, who seemed a bit out of breath. You two okay? Not exactly. A monster disguised as a bear tried to attack Larry and me, Sophie responded. I felt my face flush at the nickname. But before I could think about it any more, Nico's face turned serious as he began to speak. We ran into some trouble too, Nico looked like he wanted to say more but decided against it. We should hurry up and try to find that Gilgamesh. Do you think that's really all we need to do? I mean what about death's fire or that eternal power stuff? I asked. Prophecies are complicated. Who knows what that means, Will replied. I sighed internally. I had a feeling something bad was going to happen. Sophie. I couldn't have been more confused. Larissa hadn't been scared of me. At least, she didn't act like was. When Nico and Will showed up, I hadn't been able to gauge her reaction. But Larissa had hugged me. She hadn't back away in fear or refused to touch me. As much as I wanted to sit and think about it, I had to listen to Nico as he told us what happened. When we got separated after the earthquake, Will and I tried to make our way back but there was a lot of wreckage and some big trees that fell down. Then Will had the great idea to try and find a new path back to you too. Nico. It wasn't that great. Will. Let me compliment you, okay? Anyways, as we were walking, a bunch of butterflies swarmed over to us. And the stupid bugs wouldn't go away. Aniko stopped when Larissa said that butterflies were stupid. I may not have remembered everything I learned about Psyche but I did recall reading a Greek mythology book that said Psyche's favorite animal was butterflies. Let me finish. I was about to send them to the underworld when I remembered your mom was connected to them or something like that. That's when we noticed they were kind of flying in one general area. When we walked over to them, they all began to fly in one direction. We followed them and ended up here, Will finished. Mom must have sent them to help you find us, Larissa stated. I nodded in agreement. So what direction should we head for? Eeny, meeny, miny Missouri, catch the soul of a foe. If it screams, don't let it go. Eeny, meeny, miny Missouri. I pointed my finger at the four main directions, north, east, south, and west, and landed on north. Larissa gave me a face which was a mix of confusion and amusement. I felt my face flush as I realized I had used the underworld version of Eeny, Meeny, Miney Missouri. Nico laughed as he walked past me. Will gave me a sympathetic pat on the back before he followed my brother. 
I ran to catch up to Larissa and shot my brother a dirty look as I walked side by side with the daughter of Psyche. I opened my mouth to say something, most likely along the lines of I never learned the real version of that rhyme or my brother paid me 50 drachmas to say that but then I heard a rustle that came from one of the bushes next to me. I turned and saw something that made me feel both sick and terrified. A serpent. In the book where I learned about Psyche and her butterflies, I also learned about the other main gods and goddesses animals symbols slash favorites. And I distinctly remembered that one particular goddess loved serpents and often used them for her dirty work. That goddess was Demeter. Chapter 13, Larissa. Snakes were far from my favorite animal. As a daughter of Persephone and granddaughter of Demeter, I thought Sophie would surely just talk to the vibrant green serpent and it would slither away to wherever snakes hung out. But as she spotted the snake, I saw her face go pale as she backed away slowly. This is bad, very bad, Sophie stated. Nico unsheathed his sword and pushed Sophie behind him. I found that funny, since mere hours ago she had burned a goddess sent bare with violet fire. What do you think Demeter wants? Her daughter? Will quipped. I laughed as Nico gave him a deadpan look. What? I'm right, aren't I? Take care of which path you will take for one leads to the answers you seek while the other leads to pain and sorrow. Only two can take each one or none of you will leave to see tomorrow. The serpent didn't blink once as it spoke nor did it hiss whenever it said a word with the letter S in it like I expected. Not going to do the obvious stereotype, thank you very much, a yellow aura surrounded it before it faded away. What just happened? I asked. Sophie shook her head and just shrugged at me. It was almost like some person, maybe an author, needed to get the plot going but couldn't find a clever way to do it so she just placed a random serpent in the story to help. That didn't sound right so I ignored the thought and focused my eyes on the path Sophie had chosen for us to take. As I stared, the dirt path changed from muddy brown to pitch black. And the path in the opposite direction became a mix of gold and pink. Guess we know who takes which path, Nico muttered. I didn't like it, but he was right. The north trail was black for the children of Hades. Meanwhile the south footpath was gold for Will, the son of Apollo, and pink for me, the daughter of Aphrodite. And, why do so many Greek gods and goddesses have names starting with the letter A? I don't like this, Sophie stated. I couldn't help but agree with her. It was like the beginning of a bad horror movie where the teens split up and get killed off one by one. It's not going to end well. Well at least none of us will be alone. And I'd rather not anger Demeter any more than I already have, Sophie looked up when she spoke, probably praying to a god or goddess for luck. Or maybe a long life. We better get going. Will kept his eyes on Nico even after we started to walk away. He mouthed something that looked like strangely similar to the words I love you. Even after we had put some distance between us, neither one of us talked for a while. I don't know what Will's excuse was, but I wanted to think about something. The prophecy, to be exact. The first line said something about the child of desire. My dad, Eros slash Cupid, is the god of love and desire. Which meant me. Then it said I would face death's fire. Sophie was the daughter of Hades, the literal king of death. Clearly it meant her and that strange firepower of hers. That line had already come true, so I chose to focus on the next part. Daughter of Flower. Persephone was all about flowers, and her daughter just so happened to be Sophie. The only other daughter I could think of would be Melanoe, but that didn't make sense. She had already done her part by trying to warn us earlier. Bask in eternal power was the second part. I knew Bask meant to be exposed to something. That something had to be eternal power, whatever that meant. Whose power? If it was eternal, then it had to be one of the gods or goddesses? Right? I turned to ask Will what he thought when I felt something hit my head. Before I could process the pain, everything went dark. Chapter 14, Sophie. You did what? I winced at the harsh tone of Nico's voice. I had just finished telling him about what happened when we were separated. 
which meant I had to admit that Larissa saw me using what was known as death's forbidden fire. At least, that's what Hazel called it when I told her. The name kind of caught on with the rest of our family. I'm sorry, but that bear wasn't normal. It had to be sent by a god. I had to do something. It's not like I did it in front of Demeter. I exclaimed. He sighed and walked a little ahead of me. I caught up to him and put my hand on his shoulder to stop Nico. If it was sent by a god, odds are that bear was sent by Demeter so she probably knows now. And you could have raised the dead, make his shadow consumer him, shadow travel to safety, use plants or something. Anything except your fire, Nico replied. I knew Nico had a point but it already happened. I just have to live with the consequences. We went a long time without talking after that. I let some flowers grow along the way, kind of like Theseus did when Ariadne gave him enchanted yarn to help him not get lost in the labyrinth. Of course, that didn't exactly end well for the princess. I hadn't really been thinking of which flower to grow, so I was a bit surprised to see that the flowers were violets. I smiled. I loved violets. I think she's good for you. I looked over to Nico, who looked both serious and calm. What do you mean? Larissa. I think you two are good for each other, Nico stated. I felt my face turn red as I thought about what he said. I'm not so sure. Yeah, the whole opposite subtract thing worked for you and Hazel but that doesn't mean it will for me, I hated the whole opposite subtract thing. I wanted someone who was both different yet shared common interests with me. You two aren't that different. You both have the same kind of personality. You're pretty similar. I sighed inwardly as my brother spoke. He didn't let me talk about his love life but he wanted to talk about mine. That's just how he was though. Complicated. Yeah, yeah? Whatever? You? Say, I trailed off as a sign magically appeared in front of us, blocking the path. It was yellow with neon green letters paint on it as well as a picture. Once I realized what I was looking at, I felt angrier than I had ever been. You okay? You're shaking, Nico put his hand on my arm and I turned to look at him. Sophie, calm down. Not a chance. She's going to pay. The sign had a picture of Will and Larissa, both unconscious and in two giant root-made cages. Underneath were the words I win. Chapter 15, Larissa. I woke up to hear someone talking. I went to rub my eyes only to find my arms tied to the bars of a cage made of roots. I looked around and saw Will, still unconscious, in the same position. We were put next to each other in the center of a clearing. In front of me stood four women who had the powerful aura of goddesses. Even if they didn't, their beauty made it obvious enough. The women on my far right had long blonde hair with a dress made up of various shades of green with leaves and flowers scattered across it. Demeter. Next to her stood was a woman with black hair and electric blue eyes that looked back and forth nervously. I had never met her before, but the woman next to her with similar hair and features connected the dots for me. I'd seen her a few times whenever she came to visit my grandmother. She'd never really liked me or Hedon, always blowing us off. Since she's the queen I just shrugged it off. And while I had never met her daughter, I figured the nervous woman was Hebe, the goddess of youth. I had no idea who the last woman was though. She had on a toga the darkest shade of black I had ever seen. Her eyes were a startling silver with little flecks of midnight blue. Her smile was what scared me the most. It looked like the kind of smile a crazy serial killer might have right before she murdered some innocent soul. I was quick to shut my eyes tight when the unknown goddess turned in my direction. I can't believe this is Aphrodite's granddaughter. Hebe, I must say you did a fantastic job, Hera stated. That didn't make any sense. What was she talking about? Thank you, mother. I still don't understand why you don't like her. Hebe sounded calm but I could hear the anxiousness undertone. Because of what her mother did. She betrayed Eros and yet he still stayed by her side. Aphrodite was so miserable. What kind of mother-in-law would I be if I didn't avenge her? Hera snapped. I rolled my eyes inwardly. Since when did Hera care about her son Hephaestus's wife? Similar to what that dreadful Hades did. He kidnapped my daughter and she still wanted to be with him. 
Any offspring of his is an enemy of me, Demeter huffed. My mind started to piece together what they were talking about, but I needed more information. I have to say, I love the disorder all of this revenge has caused. Two girls born to godly parents became mortal of a night. The chaos that followed tasted so delicious. Goddess of chaos and disorder. Eris. I thought as I figured out what was going on. I decided to risk opening my eyes. I had been looking for answers my whole life and they were right in front of me. Literally. What did you do? Oh look. The little bird is awake. How cute, Eris sneered. I shuddered but kept my eyes locked on Hebe. She was the only one who sounded remorseful. She looked away before she spoke. I took your immortality away. And Eris used her powers to cause chaos by stealing Sophie's. Hebe. Hera scolded. But right then I heard a noise. Leaves crunching under what sounded like shoes. I turned to see Nico standing behind Sophie who looked very, very, angry as she stormed her way towards us. You're gonna pay for this. And then all Hades let loose. Chapter 16, Sophie. I was furious. No, livid. Positively livid. I don't care if they're the most powerful beings the entire freaking universe. No one takes my friends. Especially not Larissa, and Will. I didn't have any plans or ideas of what I was going to do when I barged into the clearing to take on four goddesses. I felt the power coursing through my veins. Skeletons appeared seemingly out of nowhere and took on Hera. Cerberus started to chase a goddess who I later found out was Hebe, Hera's daughter. Eris attempted to disappear but I used her shadow against her to keep her grounded in one spot as vines tangled around her. Later, Nico told me that animals like bears, wolves, and anything vicious to guard the goddesses after the skeletons, vines, and Cerberus subdued them. Hera put up a good fight, being the most powerful one there, but against both my mother's nature powers and my father's underworld powers, she had no chance. My fight with Demeter was intense. She kept driving away any vines, roots, or anything nature-related. She was a fierce fighter though. I concentrated and started to shadow travel at such a fast rate that I thought I'd disappear and become one myself. I quit thinking logically, though I hadn't been doing that, to begin with anyways, and used death's forbidden fire. I saw the terror in Demeter's eyes as she realized what I was doing. While I couldn't see myself, Larissa later told me that my entire body turned pitch black with violet lights circling around me. I saw Demeter and raised my hand. I was ready to kill her. I wanted her to beg and plead for mercy. I wanted her to relinquish her power to me. I'd be indestructible. No one would ever make fun of me for talking to plants. Or for being a child with such contradicting powers. Then she got in front of Demeter. I remember the hate and angry disappearing when I saw the worried yet determined look on Larissa's face. Sof, stop. It's over. Everything's okay. You're okay. She soothed. I felt myself calm down before I floated down, I don't even remember levitating in the first place. She wrapped her arms around me. What happened next is fuzzy. I turned back to normal and learned what Demeter, Hera, Eris, and Hebe had done all those years ago. The goddesses weren't happy with how I treated them. But then my parents showed up. And Larissa's. I think Zeus did too. After that, Nico said I passed out. Apparently, I could only use so much of my fire before going power hungry. Who knew? The next thing I remember is waking up in the Hades cabin with Nico and Hazel whispering to themselves. Hey guys I groaned as I sat up. Hazel rushed over and handed me a glass of water. Thanks. What happened? Nico and Hazel exchanged a look as they sat down at the end of my bed. It's a little weird. I smiled at them both. We're the children of gods. When are things not weird? Chapter 17, All. No one. Someone needs to explain what on earth happened. Zeus's voice echoed throughout the room. No one stepped forward at first. Then Hebe did. Hera tried to grab her arm but Zeus held his palm out in a stopping motion. 
He nodded at his daughter and she started to speak. Thirteen years ago, two girls were born. Larissa Dover and Sophie Blakely. Larissa is the daughter of Eros and Psyche. Sophie is the daughter of Hades and Persephone. Mother wanted to get back at Psyche because of what happened between Eros, Psyche, and Aphrodite. She wanted to avenge her daughter-in-law by hurting Psyche. What better way to hurt someone than through their children? So mother took Larissa's immortality away and prevent her the youth that all of us gods and goddesses have enjoyed for reans. Had she thought of it sooner, I'm fairly certain Hedon would have been put through the same thing. Demeter took a similar approach. We all know how much she despises Hades. And any child of his. Even if it was her own daughter's child, Demeter wanted Persephone back so much she was willing to do anything or hurt anyone. She needed someone who could do the dirty work for her, so to speak. Melanoe remained safe because Demeter hadn't yet realized who could do what she wanted to be done yet. Sophie wasn't as lucky. Eris readily agreed to help for the sole reason of causing chaos and disorder. She sent a pomegranate, a thing all children of Persephone can't resist, imbued with her discord manipulation powers. When focused, Eris can make whatever she wants to happen as long as it causes conflict and hostility. Poor baby Sophie had no reason to suspect a magical pomegranate appearing out of nowhere. After all, her mother did that all the time. We all now know about Sophie's hidden power. It was no wonder Hades and Persephone sent her away. They were concerned with her safety. The girls embarked on a quest to get the immortality they deserved. But these goddesses got in their way. Father, I ask that you restore what was wrongfully taken from those girls. Everyone remained silent as Zeus thought about what decision he should make. Sophie. After my siblings filled me in on what I couldn't remember, I immediately went to check on Larissa to make sure she was okay. Which she was. I had thought that my evil moment would definitely scare her off. But it was the exact opposite. I was so worried. She exclaimed as she wrapped her arms around me. I hesitated a second too long. What's wrong? Aren't you scared? I almost killed Demeter. Almost is the key word. I could never be scared of you, Sof. Larissa's grip on me tightened and I returned the warm embrace. Before I could say anything else, she pulled away just long enough to kiss me. She was so warm and sweet I couldn't help but kiss her back. She pulled back after a few moments with a light blush on her place. Sorry. Don't be. It wasn't horrible, I joked. She rolled her eyes and opened her mouth, probably to say something clever, but then we heard a knock at the door. I opened it to find Hermes flying impatiently. We don't have all day. Zeus wants to see you. Zeus, Hera, Demeter, Eris, Hebe, and Apollo were all gathered in the throne room when we arrived. Where my parents, or Larissa's, were was anybody's guess. Hebe informed me of what exactly happened. And trust me when I say there will be consequences for their actions, Zeus sent a look at Hera, Demeter, and Eris. I want to offer you the very thing these goddesses took. Your immortality. I couldn't believe it. I glanced over to look at Larissa. She had the same look of shock that I'm sure I had. We're going to be? Larissa trailed off, looking a little embarrassed. I squeezed her hand reassuringly. Goddesses? Of course. Zeus exclaimed. So what will your answer be? Yes. Larissa and I said in unison. Larissa. Hebe walked over to us and held out a golden cup filled with nectar towards me. I let go of Sophie's hand just long enough to grab the cup and take a long sip. It tasted like sweet tea with a pinch of honey. I handed it to Sophie. I felt a weird sensation rush through my body. All of my senses seemed to heighten. And I felt. When I turned to look at Sophie, she had a shimmering golden aura surrounding her. And when I looked at my hand I was too. The prophecy is now complete. I turned to see who had said that. It was Apollo. He cleared his throat and continued. From what I've been told, Sophie becoming power hungry was the flower basking in eternal power. Becoming goddesses like I could do anything. When I turned to look at Sophie, she had a golden aura surrounding her reminiscent to a god's aura. Or in our case, a goddess's. Larissa, 
From this point on you shall be known as the goddess of compassion. Sophie, you will be known as the goddess of willpower. Your names will forever be known as the names of goddesses who fought to regain their immortality, Zeus announced. And so the prophecy has been completed, Apollo added. Almost, anyway. What do you mean by that? I asked. He said nothing, just winked at me. May we go to Camp Half Blood? So our friends don't worry? Yes. When you return, your parents will be here waiting. Chapter 18, Both and Final Chapter. Larissa will be in italics and Sophie will be bold. You would think being a goddess would make life a little more complicated. But if anything, life just got easier. I don't know if I'd say easier. Well, it certainly didn't get harder. You've got me there. We did become known to the mortal world, slowly but surely. And our parents were thrilled. They threw the biggest party of the century. It was in Olympus but Nico and Hazel still got to go. So did Will and Piper and a lot of fellow demigods. Oh. Rachel too. Yeah. Pretty much everyone we knew came. And not just for our goddess orientation party. I have to say, I think every immortal came to our wedding. Do you remember what Apollo said after our vows? He said that the prophecy had come to pass. Two becomes one apparently meant us getting married. Who knew? I think he did. Whatever. And we lived happily ever after. Way to make the ending sappy. You love it. Yeah, yeah? You're lucky I love you. I am, aren't I? Author note, and this is the end of our story. It's been a pleasure writing for everyone who has been following this story for the past about five months. Not bad. I hope you all enjoyed.